Okay, let's say that you shot a video. It could be professionally or on a smartphone, but either way you shot it in landscape format because it seemed like a good idea, right? But now you need it in portrait orientation. Maybe for something like Instagram stories or dare I say it, TikTok. Is there an easy way to automatically reformat from landscape to portrait whilst keeping the subject tracked without having to manually go through and keyframe everything? Yes. There is, and it actually takes less than 10 seconds. So let's roll the intro and I'll show you how. Okie dokie, so in this tutorial that is in partnership with NVIDIA, we're gonna be jumping back into Premiere Pro and we're gonna check out a feature called Auto Reframe. Now this is really exciting. Essentially enables us to take a landscape formatted video, make it portrait, make it square, resize it, reformat it, whatever you want. Premiere will track the subject regardless automatically. And once we've done with that, we're going to add some speed ramping effects just to make it a bit more visually engaging. Then if you've never heard of speed ramping, essentially it's where you slow down your clip gradually or gradually speed it back up. Used correctly, this technique can look pretty cool. And if you've ever seen my Adobe Max videos, they are rife with speed ramping. And I typically set it up so it kind of matches the beat of the music. I don't know what this is, chopping board. However, if you pack a ton of speed ramping all into a single project, it can be very demanding on the old computer, if you know what I mean. And if you are using a computer with a dedicated GPU and said GPU just happens to be an Nvidia card, then you can take advantage of the CUDA renderer. Essentially, this is just gonna speed up your rendering and it's gonna save you a ton of time. So there we go, that's what we're gonna be doing. So without further ado, let's jump into Premiere Pro and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Premiere Pro and you can see I've created a new project. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go to the project panel, double click and import my video clip. This is something that I purchased on Adobe Stock. However, you can download a free 1080 preview and I'll link it in the video description if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial. All you need to do is create a free Adobe account and you can download the preview. So you can do that and follow along with this tutorial or you can import your own video footage Either way, next we're going to drag this onto the timeline. And if you haven't created a sequence already, Premiere Pro is going to generate one for you with settings that match your video clip. And we can double click on the text for the sequence and give this a name. I'm going to call this Running Man. And then I can drag the playhead around to preview the clip. And I can then press play or spacebar on the keyboard to have a look at the clip. And you can see we have a chap running against a sunrise or sunset, one of those. But we can see he moves around the frame quite a lot and the cameraman is also trying to keep up with him as well. So this was shot in landscape, it looks great in landscape, but what if we want this in portrait? We don't want to have to manually go through and keep adding keyframes to track the subject in a portrait format. So first of all, we're gonna go up to sequence, down to sequence settings, and we're gonna do just that. We're gonna create this portrait format. So let's swap our 1920 around. So we've got 1080 on the width and 1920 on the height. Let's click OK. Something very similar to Instagram stories. And we can click OK again to confirm the changes. And there we go. We have some lovely black bars added top and bottom. That just won't do. So let's click on our clip. And then up here in the top left corner, we get the effect controls tab and we get a few options here by default, one of which is scale and we can bring this up just so our video clip fills the entire frame. Now, if you're following along with this tutorial, I found somewhere between 179 and 180 does the job. Fantastic. Let's scrub back and play through this again. And as you can see already, this just will not do. I mean, he's completely running out of shot. So we could manually go through and we could keep tracking his position and adding in keyframes to keep him as the focus of the video. However, that's very manual and takes a lot of time. Fortunately in Premiere Pro, there is an effect that we can use to automatically do this for us. So up here you can see I've got my effects panel. And if you don't see this, just go up to window. You can see down here, these are all the panels that I've got active as part of my workspace. Select effects, the panel will pop up and you can drag this into your workspace wherever you like. And you can also adjust the size 
of these panels too, so you can make it larger or smaller, whatever works for you. So we have lots of different effects here. I'm just gonna twizzle these down so you can see a few. Now we have some symbols up here. The one we're going to pay attention to is this one here. If I click this, it will filter out all of the GPU accelerated effects. So if you do have an Nvidia card, CUDA is just gonna cut through these effects like butter and it's gonna make your editing process so much easier. So I can scroll down here, we can see lots of effects that are going to take advantage of GPU acceleration, but there's one we want in particular. And if we start typing here, auto, there we go, auto reframe. Now this is a relatively new effect to Premiere. We can drag this onto our clip. Premiere Pro does its thing. And you'll see up here, it's added a bunch of keyframes. And as I'm scrubbing through this, you can see what Premiere Pro does is it tracks the subject. Now, if we need to reanalyze the clip, we can click on here again. And we can also add a motion preset if our video clip is slower motion or faster. Default is good for me, but if I play the clip again, watch this. You can see that the subject remains in focus all the way throughout the clip. Pretty impressive stuff, right? So if we click this again, this is just a starting point. Premiere Pro and Auto Reframe have just done the bulk of the work. We get all these keyframes up here so we can go in manually. We can press plus or minus up in this separate timeline here. We can go in and if there's an area, I mean, this has done a pretty good job actually, but if there was an area where the keyframe was just slightly off, what we can do is we can manually adjust the position, go to the next keyframe, adjust it again. So if auto reframe doesn't get it exactly, you can still go in and edit this. And all of these keyframes, we would have had to do this manually without auto reframe. So the fact that it's done this automatically just saves so much time and just basically gives us a massive head start. Okay, so there's a look at auto reframe, a great example of how GPU acceleration paired with AI can make things much easier and much faster. Okay, so we've done auto reframe. What about if we want to add some speed ramping? Well, let's just make sure our clip is selected. And what I'm gonna do is hover over here into this part of my timeline and hold down command or control on my keyboard and use the scrolly wheel or the trackpad if you're on a laptop to make this clip a lot larger. We're gonna need this to be larger so we can see this in a moment because next we're going to right click on our clip, go show clips, keyframes, time remapping and speed. And you'll see we have this horizontal line across the middle of our clip. This is representing the speed or the velocity of our clip. And what we can do is grab our pen tool here. The shortcut on the keyboard is P and we can scrub through our clip. So we're gonna scrub through our clip here. And I think we're gonna slow it down as we get to the sun. And I think at this point, I'm gonna have it go nice and slow. So with the pen tool, I'm gonna add a marker there and we'll play this forward, a little bit of slow motion and we'll add another marker there. So if I then grab the main selection tool, what I can do is I can hover over these different points on this line and drag these segments up or down. Now, if I drag it down, I'm gonna slow the clip down. If I drag it up, I'm going to speed it up. And you can see the percent adjusting. I can also hold shift on the keyboard to move up or down in increments of 5%. So let's go for about 800. And we can do the same on this half here. There we go, 800. And I'm just gonna zoom in. You can select the timeline and click plus or minus on the keyboard to zoom in or out. And I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit so it's a bit shorter. And if I play through this again, you'll see it goes really fast and really slow. Now, if when you do this, it does look a little bit janky or anything, just go up to sequence render into out and render that clip. Now you can see that was pretty quick. Depending on your hardware, it might be a little bit slower, a little bit quicker. But either way, this is where Nvidia's CUDA renderer is just gonna make things much faster. So we all get to spend less time looking at progress bars. Yay. Okay, so at the moment, the jump from fast to slow, it happens pretty instantaneously. That might be what you're after, but 
We can also hover over here and we get this arrow and you can see we can stretch this out. We can do this on both sides, something like this. This is going to make the transition from fast to slow a little bit more gradual. Now we could bring this all the way out here so the clip gradually slows down. So if I play this, you can see slowly slowing down, but I'm just going to undo that because that's a little bit too gradual. Now with these selected, I can actually click on these little handles and I can adjust the curvature of this line. This is going to make this even more smoother. So that decrease in speed or velocity is just going to happen a little bit more smoothly. Now I can also hold down alter option on the keyboard and click on the leftmost half of this marker. And I can actually move this around and move the position around depending on where I would like the clip to slow down and speed up. So if I scrub back to the beginning, I'm just going to render this really quickly. The bar turns green to indicate that the clip is rendered and then I can press spacebar to play the clip. And as I mentioned, we could make this a little bit slower. This depends on how you shot your footage. If you shot it at a really high frame rate, you might get away with slowing it down a little bit more. So if we just try this, you can see I can slow it down even more. It looks a little bit choppy. Something you can do to get around this is right click on the clip, go to time interpolation, change that to optical flow, give it a render. And sometimes that can enable you to slow down your clips even more and actually get away with it. It just does something where it smooths the frames together a little bit better. And you can sometimes actually slow it down beyond what you would normally get away with. So let's play this one more time. So there we go. We've taken our landscape video clip. We've changed it to a portrait orientation. And we've also added some speed ramping in there just to make it a little bit more visually interesting. And there we go. So there's a look at how we can combine Premiere's auto reframe with some speed ramping effects and some solid GPU acceleration. So thank you to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Guys, if you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. <laughs>